That's it. <laughs> so we're now here measuring the camera. Uh, it's uh, Uwe's camera, Uwe Lescher. You may you know him from Uwe Lescher Photography. He's a very, very, very good photographer. <laughs> so now let's uh, explain what you're doing here. Well, what we're doing is uh, we're uh, checking the sharpness, uh, the, or to be more precise, the precision of the autofocus of this camera lens combination. Okay. Uh, the newest camera allows to change the settings of the autofocus. Well, it's a very old camera. <laughs> uh, I guess so. It's, it's at least, uh, what, one month old? Mm -hmm. no, it's one old. And um, so the newest camera allows to, well, let's say, middle range and uh, prosumer and amateur, advanced amateur and uh, professional cameras. Most of them and most of the brands, they allow us to change the focus setting more or less like the compensation, exposure compensation can go darker and brighter and here we can bring the focus uh, forward or back one. So we can correct eventually the problem of uh, front focus or back yes. focus. So you, you, to do this with the spider lens cap, we take a picture of the lens cap, focusing on the vertical target and we enlarge the picture ideally on a screen, on a monitor screen, but we can also use a camera screen. And we check on the ruler here if the zero is the sharpest area of the image. In yeah. that case, it means the autofocus is precise. If not, like if we have any one of these numbers here uh, sharp, it means we, we have a situation of uh, front focusing. If any one of these numbers is more sharp than the zero, then we have a back focusing situation. Okay. And from the camera menu, we will change uh, and the settings. Does it uh, often happen that the camera is not uh Perfect. Well, unfortunately, uh, with all of our uh, calibration we did, and we calibrated so far over uh, 2,000 camera lenses combination, okay. over 80% of camera lenses combination needs autofocus correction. Okay. And uh, that's, it, there's not a brand better than the other one, there's not a lens better than the other one, there are some trends of course, but even new cameras out of the box, with new lenses out of the box, sometimes they are not as precise as they should. So, okay, but, but you have to do it for every lens. You have to do it with uh, every lens. As a general rule, uh, cameras they can store up to 20 lenses. Yes. And uh, each time you put the lens on the camera, the camera will recognize the lens by the serial number and you will automatically apply the correction. Okay. So that, that is not the problem. It just, it, it's a procedure that it takes about 3-4 minutes for each lens. Yes. So it's not as long as that somebody could think. And, but besides that, it's really helpful because then at least we are sure that we don't get the problem that normally we get that we focus on the eye and we get either the tip of the nose or the ear sharper yes. than the eye. So in that case, we can solve that problem. Okay, then let's do it. Let's do it. And the first thing to do is to have the camera on uh, aperture priority and uh, we want to have the ISO 200 or 100 so in this case 200 is the lowest one want the camera it's out. can't 100 then let's switch it to uh, we have to the okay well probably we okay super and uh, it might be a little bit longer to explain because everything is in German which to me is about the same as Chinese but uh, and then uh, <laughs> <laughs> and 2.8 is going to be like the widest aperture for this lens. Yes. Of course, when uh, another issue we have with uh, most of the cameras is that they allow only one correction for each lens. It means if we have a zoom lens, we have to pick at which focal lens and at which distance we want to use it. Some cameras, they allow us to correct the uh, focus performance at the widest and longest uh, focal range and some other cameras also allow to do it for different uh, fo uh, focusing distances. Uh, some producer they suggest to do the co this correction at uh, 50 times the focal length. Okay. That means if I'm shooting with a 100 millimeters, I should be at 5 meters. I honestly I do not agree with that. I think it's uh, better to if you do it at 50 times the focal length, it means you have a, like a general correction for the autofocus. Yeah. I'd rather have a correction which is uh, specified on the foc on the distance that I normally work with. If I have a 100mm, it's most likely a portrait lens, 
and I don't shoot portrait with 100 millimeters at five meters. Yes. Most of the time it's going to be one meter, one meter and a half, two meters. So I'd rather optimize my focusing performance for that distance okay. rather than five meters. So in this case, we have a 24 to 70 millimeter, and uh, 24 millimeters is a very wide lens, especially on a full frame camera. So most likely everything will be sharp. And at 70 millimeter, we might see some issues, if any. So in this case, I choose to shoot at 70 millimeter. The other thing is very important to do is to align the camera and the lens scale properly. The lens scale has a level on it. Uh, some cameras have an electronic level. Most yes. the D3 has, it has a level, electronic level. Leveling the camera? I think so. I never used it. <laughs> well, let's pretend there's not in here. So. Uh, something which is useful is to use the live view, which I guess is. Uh, no, D3S is at the bottom. Okay, here we go. So just to have a first um, idea of where we are. And uh, can I zoom in with this camera? I guess so. Here, probably. No. You can see I'm a Canon user, but okay, here we go. Okay, also very important to keep in mind if you see, for example, let's say we're here. If you see there is some space between the vertical target and the ruler, it means you're too much on the right. If you see the, you don't see completely the ruler, you're too much on the left. Okay. So the vertical target and the ruler should be parallel. It means you are aligned on the horizontal plane. Okay. Okay. So here we are. Then the view, the light view is just as a overall setting, but it's always better to align and look inside. And ideally, the central focusing point of the camera should be here, yeah. especially for the T800, <laughs> which has too many points. <laughs> so it should be here. The All right. Issue. Yes. You can have, if no the camera and the lens are perfectly aligned, you can also have the central focusing point here. You don't care. The point is, the closer you are here, in case of uh, these alignments, the less error you get. So I try to focus here, not too much on the right, because if the focus point goes here, of course, it's useless for the entire scene. And here we go. And before I take the final picture, I did focus with the, so the, the camera is actually searching for it, I'm sure. Sometimes it's already in the focusing area. Maybe the, Minimal adjustment or something that doesn't even pretty much. Okay. I will say we go on the on the computer screen. Do you remember if one or two? One. Okay. Do we have a bodyguard for the camera? <laughs> no one wants to steal that because it's I'm sure somebody would be just don't move it because we need to keep the distance the same. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's very fine. <laughs> okay, let's see. Yeah, I forgot to say the camera. The camera set to shoot JPEG now. Yeah, it would have been easier to check it. But yes, that's the one. Five millimeters front focus. Two point five. 
zero point five. Well, no, zero point five centimeters. Uh, or centimeters. Or five or five millimeters uh, front focusing. So for most photographers, that would be fine. Yeah. Uh, we can also try just a tiny bit of adjustments to get a perfect zero. Also, depending on what you do, some patient photographer they prefer to to leave some uh, back focusing. Maybe sometimes the, the nose or the ear goes in, in focus faster than the eye, so they just leave one centimeter of back focusing to get the eyes sharp. In this case, get the card back and. I'm a cannon user. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I remember what's on and off. So, to, to correct now, we go in this menu here, the system menu, and you go out of focus, find your schema. We have to activate it, and from here, it's quite easy because it reflects basically what we're seeing. So, in this case, we have a little bit of front focusing, so of course, we have to go towards the back focusing area. I would probably just go plus three or plus two, it's a very fine saddle adjustment. So it's now set. I defocus again. Now, number one, bodyguard will take care of the camera. that uh, with this tool I discovered that if you take the same camera and you take six lenses, same model, you go in the store, out of the box, they will all perform slightly different. It's, that's amazing, but that's, they call it production tolerances, yeah. I call it inability to produce perfect yeah. tools from the beginnings. Okay. That's it. But, uh, thank you very much. My pleasure. And we'll and try enjoy, the next one. And enjoy the sharp lenses. Thank you.